Hamlin Pavelski. I'm a professor at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and I'm NASA's hydrology science lead for the SWAT satellite mission. And I'm here to tell you about hydrology data products from the SWAT mission. So if you're here, I'm guessing you might have heard about the SWAT mission already, but I want to tell you just a little bit more about it to make sure we're all on the same page before we start. So SWAT stands for the Surface Water and Ocean Topography Mission. The SWAT satellite uses interferometric radar technology, and it's designed to measure two things, to measure where water is, so inundation extent, and what the elevation of water is, so water surface elevation. And it's designed to do that in the, in the world's uh, lakes, rivers, and oceans. It launched on December 16th of 2022, um, we get observations, eh, something like every 10 days, but it really varies a lot depending on where you are globally. It covers most of the globe, unless you're interested in key parts of the Arctic and Antarctic. Our goal is to have data out to you uh, within uh, three days of when it's collected. We're hoping that it lasts for longer, but it's supposed to be a three and a half year mission. And importantly, it's a, it's a partnership between NASA CNES, the French Space Agency, with additional contributions from the Canadian Space Agent Agency and the UK Space Agency. If you look at the figure on the right, you can see a mock-up of SWAT. And essentially, every time SWAT passes over, it's flying along uh, the brown line in the middle, and it's collecting uh, its primary data sets over the two brown SWATs, one on either side. And if we think about SWAT's fundamental measurements, it's really collecting data on two things. The first thing is what we call backscatter. And this is essentially the amount of energy, so SWAT sends a radar pulse out, and it's measuring the amount of energy that returns to the satellite. And we can use this information to help us estimate where water is, because SWAT is designed to have high backscatter over water. The second thing it measures is what we call phase. And this is a little bit more complicated. I'm not gonna get into it in too much detail here. But the important thing to know is that uh, essentially, it's a form of timing measurement, and we can use it to uh, estimate or measure water surface elevation based on differences in this phase between two antennas um, in terms of when the, uh, the signal returns. And this is based on uh, radar interferometry or the interfer interferometric measurement concept. So if you're a hydrologist and you're interested in using data products, I'm guessing that you're not super interested probably in the raw backscatter and phase you might be more interested in something like water surface elevation or inundation extent. So how do you get that information? So it turns out that we have eight different data products that are provided by the mission um, that are specifically designed to help with hydrology. And I'm not gonna go through all of these today because some of them either um, are auxiliary data products or are not yet available. So I'm gonna focus on just four of them, the pixel cloud, the River Single Pass, the Lake Single Pass, and the Raster Data Product. And you can see two of those um, in the figure on the right here, the Lake Single Pass and the River Single Pass. So let's start with the Pixel Cloud Product. So this is an example of what the Pixel Cloud Product looks like. And this is the rawest georeferenced SWAT data. So if you're looking at any raw data, you have to do it in radar coordinates. And maybe that's something that you want to do. But if so, I bet you already know how to get your information. So the pixel cloud, it looks a little bit like a LiDAR point cloud. So if you, if you look at the figure on the left, this is uh, over part of uh, the Owens Valley in California and the Sierra Nevadas. Uh, you can see that each one of these pixels represents a place where SWAT thinks there might be water, and the color represents elevation. So yellows are higher and purples are lower. And if you look at the zoom in, um, this is of a, a, a reservoir down in the valley, and you can see each of these individual little dots. And each one of those dots has an associated inund inundation extent, a water surface elevation, a bunch of quality flags, et cetera. So the pixel cloud it's represented as a point cloud. It's stored in a net CDF format. The granules uh, cover essentially one side of that SWAT swath. So they're 64, about 64 kilometers by 64 kilometers. And I will say that these are relatively large files. So there's something like a gigabyte per granule, or they can be that big. And so this might not be the product for you if you want to study something globally. 
but it might be the product for you if you want to design bespoke algorithms on uh, relatively raw SWOT data. I will also say that the pixel cloud data is where we start from for a lot of the other data products. So let's move on to our next data product and think about rivers. So the SWAT River SP or single pass data product starts with the concept of a river. And I want you to imagine that this Carolina blue stripe here is a river. And we start with uh, essentially SWAT overpassing. And it's collecting something that looks like the pixel cloud data. So that's uh, all of these black dots. And what we want to do is we want to take this pixel cloud data and organize it in a way that would make sense for studying a river. So the first thing that we do is we aggregate uh, all of those pixels onto a center line, a predefined center line. And I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next slide. And we divide that center line up into about 200 meter long chunks that we call nodes. And each one of those dots gets associated to its closest node and then averaged. And then we aggregate a whole bunch of nodes, about 50 of those nodes, into reaches that are about 10 kilometers in length. So the L2HR River SP product is a vector product. It's in shapefile format, and you have two options. You can download, download a reach option, which contains data on these about 10 kilometer reaches represented as polylines. Or you can download the node product, which provide, which is a, a sort of a finer resolution product that's represented as points. And either way, each one of these is going to include information on water surface elevation, inundation extent, reaches will include information on slope, there will be information on quality flags, corrections, etc. And I'll show you an example of this in a minute, but one granule of river SP data is going to represent one SWAT overpass, so those two swaths. Um, passing over one continent. So let's take a look at some of this data and what it might look like. Um, but before we do that, let's think about where we're collecting this data or, 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 or what rivers we're looking at. So this is the SWAT River database, also called SWORD. And uh, so we've got about 213,000 uh, reaches worldwide. And each one of those reaches contains on average something like 50 nodes. So you can do the math on how many nodes we have, but it's a lot. And uh, so you can go and download SWAT data for nearly any of, of these reaches um, or nodes globally. So now let's take a look at what uh, this data looks like. So this is an example of one SWAT uh, uh, river vector pass over South America from March 14th of 2024. You can see that it's covering part of the Amazon and uh, down into the Andes and up into, uh, into Venezuela. And you can see all of the individual rivers there colored by elevation. If we zoom in a little bit um, on just one of these rivers, you can very clearly see uh, the slope of this river. You can see that it's higher to the south and it's lower to the north. This is exactly what we would hope for with SWAT. And if you zoom in even a little bit further on this, you can now start to see individual nodes in this river. So we're looking at the node data product here. And so you can see these uh, these little dots or nodes, and a lot of these nodes behave exactly the way that you would expect. There are some that might look like outliers. Sometimes we do have errors in SWAT data, but mostly this looks just like what we would hope for in SWAT data. Okay, so that's rivers. What about lakes? So just like for for uh, rivers with with Sword, we have a prior lake database. And uh, we've got about 6 million lakes that we're hoping to observe with SWAT. And so just like for rivers, we have a vector, a set of vector data products for, um, for, for this uh, prior lake database as well, representing SWAT data. So let's talk a little bit about what those are. So this is a little bit of a complicated figure, but it's also important. So if you go and try to download SWAT uh, lake SP data, you're going to see that there are three different kinds of files. There's lake sp underscore obs, lake sp underscore prior, and lake sp underscore unassigned. So the difference between obs and prior is the important one. I'll get to unassigned in a minute. So the upper left panel of this little figure shows um, what we have observed with SWAT 
for example, uh, a lake boundary in solid lines and what the prior lake database represents in uh, dashed lines. And so you can see that sometimes the topology of these lakes is different, right? So in this lake over here, SWAT is seeing this as one lake, the, the PLD sees it as two. Over in this lake, SWAT sees it as two different lakes and the PLD sees it, sees it as one. So if you decide that you wanna go with the observations, then we're gonna be representing this as one, this lake over here on the left is one polygon and the one on the right is two polygons. If instead you want a time series for every prior lake, then you probably want to want to go with the prior. And in that case, you're representing the lake on the left as two different polygons and the one on the right as as one polygon with with uh, sort of two parts to it. So the third one, lake unassigned, is essentially anything that isn't in the prior lake database that we think even conceivably could be a lake gets put in here. I will say, um, if you take a look at this, you will see a lot of very interesting things, and many of them are probably not lakes, but some of them are. So it's it's sort of a uh, a holding uh, pond for for features that we might want to add to the prior lake database in the future. So just like for rivers, one pass represents uh, or one granule represents one pass over one continent, and I. Uh, this uh, data product also includes information on water surface elevation, inundation, extent, quality flags, and corrections. So if we look at an example, this is an, another example for some lakes in uh, Peru and in, uh, in, uh, high in the Andes in South America. You can see all of these polygons that represent lake boundaries, and they're colored by the elevation of the lake. And so this is, if you go and download, I believe this is the observed product. If you go and download the observed product, you will see something that looks a lot like this. Okay, so the last data product that I wanna talk about is the raster data product. And this is the one that might be most familiar to you if you're used to, to working with satellite data because it's a nice even uh, raster. And the way it's stored, it's in, a, it's in a UTM projection. We have two native resolutions for it, 100 meters and 250 meters. It's on a geographically fixed grid. So from uh, pass to pass, you should be able to compare uh, individual grid cells. It's stored in a slightly different format than the um, pixel cloud is. It actually aggregates two by two, like a two by two square pixel cloud tile. So it's a 128 by 128. And it's stored as a net CDF um, with each rasterized layer as its, uh, as its own layer in the net CDF. So if we look at what uh, um, this looks like, this is for an area over Columbia, a wetland area. Um, you can see uh, this is just an example of the water surface elevation that's recorded in in the raster product. And I would say that the, you can use the raster product for many things. It's particularly good for places and areas that are not well represented by polygons. So this is a big uh, wetland complex where the the extent of the wetland can change dramatically over time. It's probably not something that polygons represent very well. And so this is a place where you might want to consider using the raster product. OK, so I've just given you a really quick rundown of these data products. Where do you go for more information? So the first place I would go is to PODAC, um, the Physical Oceanography DAC, which uh, stores uh, all of the SWAT data. You can get a product description document or an algorithm theoretical basis document for any of these um, different data products here. I just scan the QR code or go to the link that's provided down at the bottom here. I strongly recommend it if you're going to use um, all of this. Now, what if you're relatively new to SWOT and you just want a place to start? So where should you start? You should start with the SWOT Science Data Products User Handbook. So. This gives a fantastic overview of how the whole mission works. It talks about um, all of the data products, some of the sources of error. It tells you about um, some of the pitfalls that you might run into. So if you go and actually look at this document in detail before you start your analysis, you are gonna solve so many problems that you're gonna run into otherwise. Your paper review is gonna go so much better. Everyone who uses SWOT data should have read this uh, uh, this handbook, so I strongly recommend that you go and take a look at it before you, you download your SWOT data. So what are my take home messages here? SWOT has a variety of data products, a lot of which don't look that much like other NASA data products. 
It can be used to track water levels in rivers, lakes, and actually we didn't talk about it too much except for with the raster, but also in some wetlands. My recommendation is to read the user handbook and other documentation before you use the data. And you can public you can download the data uh, if you are um, if you are listening to this right now, you can download the data either from NASA or CANAS at the two sites listed here. So thank you very much and go SWAT.